Shalom and welcome to our 21st annual Feast of Weeks. This is part 20 of Preparing for Rulership. So when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. I'm coming teaching righteousness. I'm coming demonstrating righteousness. Then if you want to rejoice, then all you have to do is receive me. Accept me. It's as simple as that. A con man knows after viewing me for a little while that I'm a righteous man. So you know, there's no need to try to trick this man because he's righteous. You got that right. You can't do it to me because I'm clean. My mind is clean. You can't promise me nothing because I don't listen to promises. I don't believe in promises. I don't even believe in that. I have proven to you that cattle breeding, one of our traditions, tradition of Israel, and I've also proven to you that just the very nature of the physical cow breeding becomes an industry. Now, spiritually today, this means that we have to take the lesson from cattle breeding and become like the ant and like the bee. Become industrious. Become producers. Now we came into the possession of Canaan and when we did we lived on the borders of cultivated land. Other nations had cultivated land. And we depended on watering our flocks in due time and having grass for them during the whole year. Therefore, we were obliged to conclude treaties between our own groups and with the owners of the cultivated grounds concerning water and food. We had to make treaties. We're talking about our history. See, to understand your present and your future, you have to understand your history. If you don't know your past, you don't know who you are now. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Look up treaty, daughter. See, uh, another word for treaty in the word of Yahweh is covenant. A covenant means an agreement. Now, it's unethical to make a covenant or a treaty and don't keep it. Now, the people who run America, namely white people, are an unethical people, for they made treaties with the Indians and never kept one. They promised you freedom since 1865, and you're not free yet. They promised you 40 acres and a mule. And they turned around and made you the mule. Unethical people. Treaty. Treaty. A formal agreement between two or more states containing terms of trade, peace. Wait a minute. Terms of what? Trade. T-R-A-D-E. Look at it. Look at that. We, as a people in America, have not had enough sense to effect a treaty between our slave masters and ourselves. After leaving the plantation, we still remain a worker slave dependent. When they decide to close down your business, you just hope they have another one somewhere that you can go to. You don't have a treaty. Hmm? You don't have an agreement for trade because you don't think trade. You don't produce anything. Outside of Yahweh, see, we, we into producing. Oh, yes, we into producing. Uh, it, it may be in other newspapers and some other thing about some other people have hair food. I'll say, but we had that for the last four years. I, I wonder why people act like 
somebody else just come out with some stuff like, you know, shampoo and stuff this year. That's weird, isn't it? Man, we've been going door to door across America with Yahweh Shack food and Yahweh hair food and lotion and all that kind of stuff, huh? So, and people act like that's something that's gonna save niggas. They, see, they're so far behind. So I found that no matter how much a nigga washed with soap, it is not gonna free his mind. Okay, how you smell? See, you be smelling good, but you be talking crazy. Won't cooperate at all. But I laugh when other people imitate me and then they, they try to make it a big production like this is going to be salvation. <laughs> Employment salvation. Boy, they, they need to talk to me. I could tell them exactly where they're going to be three years from now. <laughs> then you watch where I be. And everybody be trying to figure out how I got there. I'm busy, they'll never know, because I'm busy working in the quarry. So the work of tomb is not heard. There you go. I'm shaking and fashioning the rough ashla. I'm plumbing the stone, squaring the stone in the quarry. So when I bring it to build my temple, everything will already be flush, plush, and in place. Yes. And uh, you will become that chief cornerstone. That you the one the builders rejected? Oh, I got you coming. Oh, yes, Yahweh. Isn't that incredible news? Treaty deals with trade. We effected treaties and covenants between our neighbors and our God, Yahweh. But see, we've lost that knowledge. So as a people, we sit around in the ghettos of America, scratching, and all that can try to make money off the rest of us. To help us? No. No. Help himself. Hmm? Call you selfish? It hurts when I say these things, but see, somebody got to tell you. Trade black. Trade black. And when you trade with him, he won't trade with you. He wants to take all the money he get from the black neighborhood and go live white. Oh my goodness. Talk black, live white. See, y'all taught me, don't believe in the skin color game. Don't come to me talking about cause we black. See, I don't believe in that. Tell you up front, now, don't nobody come to me with that game. We black people, and we black people need to stick together. No, ain't nothing black ever gonna stick together. <laughs> never. You get nothing black has never stuck together. You're not ever gonna get nothing black to stick together cause you black. That's jive. <laughs> that is con game. I'm a truth man. I have to tell you like it is. You, I don't want you to follow me because you black or I'm black. No, I don't even believe in that. I believe in Yahweh. I don't believe in black supremacy. I believe in supremacy. Yahweh is supreme. You want to be supreme? Come live like Yahweh say live, and you'll be supreme. Not because you're black, but because you live like God say live. That's the way it goes. <laughs> Treaty. <laughs> Treaty. Trade. Trade. Good gracious. Everybody get the, you tuning in? I'm making sure that I'm deliberately slow, but I'm not going to run over this. Treaty, trade, cultivated land, cattle breeding, industry. That's us. That's what Yahweh commands of us. Okay. Treaty, a formal agreement 
between two or more states containing terms of trade, peace. You see, I'm the Prince of Peace. Have you noticed how my enemies have been turned into my footstool? I mean, they constantly tried to make war, physical war. I laughed. I always did. I'm so high above them. They have to leave here looking so ridiculous. <laughs> I just keep doing good. It's like, I'm just like, y'all always say, be like the ant, so that's what I am. If you go out and kick an ant hill down, what will the ant do? Yeah. And the next day you go kick it down. Yeah. And every day you go out and kick it down. Yeah. And who's going to win that battle in the end? See, when you make your last kick and drop dead, the ant's heel will be successful. <laughs> and guess what? The ant will probably come and sting up on you and bite you after you die. Take some of your parts back down off of that ant hill. We, the nation of Yahweh, are like the ants. You can come and kick on us, but we're going to build it right back up. Whatever you do, I'm just going to keep on building right back up. I'm going to win because I'm going to keep building right back up. Throw a brick at me, I'll take it and build a house with it. I'll do it. Throw me some more bricks. You throw a brick, I duck. Take it, add another one to the house. You know, here's a fool tearing his house down to throw a brick at me. I'll take his brick and build me a house. <laughs> it takes wisdom to do that. Please turn to side two. Trade. Treaty. A formal agreement between two or more states containing terms of trade, peace, alliance, or the like. Alliance? You know what alliance means? Mutual protection, mutually agreed upon protection. Now to us, covenants are sacred. Covenants were always sacred. The sacredness of covenants was essential for our lives, including the covenant with our Elohim, God Yahweh, who has the power and the might to increase or stop the fertility of our cattle or our crops. It is the power and the might of Yahweh to retain or give rain. It is the power and the might of Yahweh to multiply or diminish the wild beast or the serpent. See, in our history, in crossing the desert, we had to contend with wild beasts and serpents. That spiritually today means we have to deal with men whose minds are like beasts as Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king, reduced to seven years, crawling around on his hand knees in the forest, in the woods, in the book of Daniel. So men can be given the mind of a beast proven by King Nebuchadnezzar. So when he came up out of that condition after seven years, he said, surely, oh, surely, there is a God in heaven that rules in the affairs of men. Today, spiritually, we have a people in charge of this country who have the mind of wild beasts. They're uncaring, unfeeling about the people of the earth who are hungry, suffering, in misery, in America, are homeless, starving. They have no feeling. They're like wild beasts in the mind. And they are like serpents of the mind. They're crooked, unethical. Animals don't have ethics. The 
covenant with our God, Yahweh. Being sacred is essential because we look to Yahweh to protect us from our enemies who are swifter and better armed than we are. See, historically, our enemies around us were like Pharaoh. He was swifter than us. They, 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 Pharaoh and his army had no trouble catching up to us when we left. But they had a problem when they caught us. See, Yahweh was in a spaceship, looking like a cloud by day and a fire by night. He separated. He kept a wall between our enemy and us. Though they were swifter than us and better off than we were, then he stepped in and set Yahweh, part of the Red Sea. We're sending a strong wind from the east. See, I could go into that, but that's so long. I, I say that for a few. Strong east. to give it to you guys. See, our enemy today, he too is swifter than we are. Their middle is swifter than my people. They able to run games like urban renewal, which is a cold word for Negro removal. Another trick, model cities. You end up with no city. Overtime become undertime. All over America. Cold words, cold names, tricks. Swifter in the mind than we. They're better armed. They got SWAT teams, military, police, army, navy, marines. And they're so swift, they get you to come in and die for them in their military machinery. And you feel honored to do it. And won't stand up to fight for your mama's freedom, your wife or your daughter's freedom, or your sister's freedom. And I don't mean being brave to fight with a gun. I'm talking about stand up and fight spiritually. You don't have the fortitude to stand up spiritually and be ethical, straightforward and open, righteous, and judgment, and character, and your nature, and operate according to the will of Yahweh. You avoid all of that. Hallelujah. So that means we need a protector. And I've come to protect you from your enemies who are swifter than you, better armed than you. So after coming into the possession of Canaan, we preserve the knowledge that we had not got it by our own strength. We depended on our mighty God, Yahweh, in the past. We depended on Yahweh right now in the present. And that indicates we shall depend on him in the future. This concludes part 20 of Preparing for Rulership.